Good day. We're in for quite a treat today. Over the last few videos, you've learned quite a few skills about how to graph hyperbole and how to uh, deduce where asymptotes to curves lie. We're going to break out and explore a bit and create some quite pretty patterns on the graph paper. So let's have a look. You'll recall that if we have something like x minus 1 times y plus 2 equals 3, that this is a structure that gives us asymptotes. We have a product of two terms giving an, us a non-zero value, which means that neither of these can be zero. So x cannot possibly be 1. That means there's no part of the graph touches x equals 1, and there's no part of the graph touches y equals negative 2. So if we draw this particular hyperbola, and 1, 2, 3, 4. At x equals negative 1, sorry, at x equals 1 we have an asymptote. And at y equals negative 2 we have an asymptote. And you know that our hyperbola fits in here and in here. That is if you watched our previous videos. What I propose doing is adding another term which is a little bit different. And it's a term where I'm going to combine y and x. Now this is odd. You don't see these in normal school courses, and by the way, the instant you do this, you cease to have a function, and we'll see that in a moment. What does this term do? Well, again, we've now got three terms multiplied to make three, which means that none of them can be zero, because zero times something will give us zero, not three. So that can't be zero, that can't be zero. We've taken account of those. What would we get if y minus x equals zero? Well, if we add x to both sides, we find we've got this equation. And what it means is that if y actually equals x, we get a zero here and we get an undefined equation. We simply cannot solve it. So y equals x causes us the same kind of problem as x equals 1 and y equals negative 2. If I draw y equals x, it'll go through the origin at a 45 degree angle. And here it is here. This also is an asymptote. Now, normally in school we don't deal with what are called oblique asymptotes. We only deal with vertical and horizontal asymptotes. But here's an oblique one, and it's just as valid and just as much an asymptote as the others. So here's something quite new. Now, if I graph the curve, it's going to look a little bit odd. There's going to be a portion of it here. Oh dear, the board's moving, so I'm not, I'm not getting a very good result here. There's a portion of it there. Diagonally across, remember our checkerboard pattern? There's a bit is going to be trapped inside these three asymptotes here. Diagonally down here, there's going to be a portion of it here. And now you can see why this is no longer a function because if we perform our vertical line test, here for example, we find the function actually has two values. Uh, diagonally across here, there's a portion of the graph. And there it is. This is a rather unusual graph. All because we've, we now understand how to create asymptotes, and we've suddenly created a rather unusual one that's using the x and y values has an equation of x and y which you will recognise as a linear function. So we have a straight line with a gradient that's not zero or infinite. Let's try this again because I like it.
This time we'll draw an hyperbola, which is a function that's got two asymptotes that intersect. And uh, our hyperbola this time will look like this. We're going to use this to create y equals x as an as a hyper as a, an asymptote, and this one to create y equals minus x. Now if you multiply these out, you'll see you get something like y squared minus x squared equals 2. Or you could have x squared minus y squared. This particular one, when we graph it, is going to have one asymptote where y equals x, so this is this one, and one asymptote where y is equal to negative x or minus x, which is this one. So now we have two asymptotes uh, at right angles to each other, but they've been rotated 45 degrees. Now I think you can see that if x was 0, y would be plus or minus root 2, which means x is 0 here. If I had uh, units on here, root 2 would be about there. Minus root 2 would be about here. So obviously, the curve is going to go through those two points. And uh, if I draw it, we have one part of a hyperbola here, and we have another part of it. Whoops. It's much easier drawing these on paper than on whiteboard, but we'll see how we go. I'll just, I think I'll just mess that up if I fiddle with it. Here we go. Well, that's unusual. This is like nothing you've seen probably in your school course. Let's experiment even further. Did you know that technically it's possible to have an asymptote that's not straight? Now, they're not common, they're not spoken about a great deal, but they're called curvilinear asymptotes. And I'm going to use one of the simplest curves we know, which is a parabola. So, let's have y minus x squared as a factor. I'm going to multiply it by something else and we're going to get a constant. But if I multiply this, this is going to give me y equals x squared as a, an asymptote. If I put um, y minus 3 for example, I'm going to get this. And I hope you're starting to appreciate the game that we're playing. Uh, what we've discovered is a principle of graphing, or a few principles of graphing, that we're exploring. And this is what mathematics is about. Now, this means that y equals 3 is an asymptote, so let's put that here, y equals 3. And this means that y equals x squared is an asymptote. Well, that goes through the origin, and through 1, 1, minus 1, through 2, 4. So, this parabola is actually going to be an asymptote. believe it or not. Now it turns out that when we graph this, the first part of the curve's up here. In fact, if we substitute x equals 0, uh, we get a quadratic in y, which we can solve. And we would find that there's a, a point here. I haven't actually analysed where it is. But part of our curve, it's not a hyperbola anymore, uh, but part of it is asymptotic to the parabola. So it gets closer and closer to the parabola, 
as you go out towards infinity. If we cross diagonally and cross diagonally, we're in the same region, and it turns out the other part of the graph is a rather odd piece. It's tangential, not tangential, it's asymptotic to y equals 3 out here. It's asymptotic to y equals 3 out here. And it turns out that it does something like this. So there's an unusual curve. And I want you to explore and experiment with these. By the way, uh, if you want to spend a few interesting minutes, go to Wolfram Alpha is a a site on the, on the internet that I think you'll find very valuable and type equations like this in and see the graphs that are produced and experiment, try and put in unusual functions uh, I'm going to actually introduce a circle next now strictly speaking because a circle doesn't go to infinity it's not considered even a curvilinear asymptote but nonetheless it is part of the graph that part of the uh, plane that the graph simply cannot touch and we'll have a look at that next. So let's experiment now with a circle. Now you know that the equation for a circle is something like x squared plus y squared equals 4. That's a circle with a radius of 2. So if I rearrange this that's the same circle so if I put it in, a, in an equation where this cannot possibly equal zero, then that is going to behave, although it's not strictly an asymptote, it's going to behave like one. So here we go. x squared plus y squared minus 4. That will give us a circle. Let's, let's actually plot this as we go. Okay, so the circle is going to have a radius of 2. There we go. Uh, what we might do is... Let's do this. Let's put y minus x and y plus x. And let's make it equal to some number. So y minus x will give us y equals x as an asymptote. And this will give us y equals minus x as an asymptote. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 regions. And I hope I'm right. I think this... Uh, is going to start with part of the graph up here which is going to be asymptotic to these two lines as they go out to infinity and have a little bulge over here now diagonally across the boundary part of it's going to be trapped inside this little bit diagonally across this boundary part of it's going to be trapped inside this little bit and uh, diagonally across these we're going to have a corresponding part down here. Well, there's an unusual graph. In fact, we can start to see that we can create little things with faces and eyes and whatever. But I hope you can see the potential for this. Now, strictly speaking, asymptotes are lines. Now, you understand they can be curved now, but they're lines towards which a graph approaches forever, but never actually touches as we go out towards infinity. Because this is a closed curve here, it's not technically called an asymptote. But, as you can see, it behaves in much the same way. I hope you like that. 
I enjoy experimenting with this. And I, I do recommend the site Wolfram Alpha. I've spent a fair amount of time uh, typing these kinds of equations in, uh, just experimenting and exploring because I enjoy the pictures that they, cre they create. And sometimes it's a bit of a challenge to think, can I make a graph that looks like a particular shape? Now, in a couple of videos time, I'm going to actually show you how the previous oh, dozen or so videos all fit together. The polynomials, the rational functions, the hyperbole, the asymptotes, the zeros, the, the, the whole lot. Uh, it may not yet have occurred to you, I hope it has, but there is a way of linking it all together. And when you have an overarching understanding of it all, then you start to see the principles and why they apply the way they do, even more clearly. Uh, look, I, I'm tempted to go on and on and on with this, but I think the video is probably already long enough. So what we've done, just to rehearse in this particular video, is we've gone exploring and we've learned that not only can we have vertical and horizontal asymptotes, but we could have oblique asymptotes, asymptotes that are straight but on, a, on an angle, and we can have uh, things that behave like asymptotes, like circles, and certainly we can have curvilinear asymptotes uh, like a parabola. By the way, if I wanted to alter the gradient of this, it's simple enough. If I did y minus 2x, then my asymptote will be y equals 2x, which would be a steeper line. It would go through 1, 2 and 2, 4, and the asymptote would now be steeper. And if I wanted to move it away from the origin, I would just do this, and therefore the asymptote would be where y minus 2x minus 4 is 0, or y equals 2x plus 4. So I did neglect to mention that. So you can move these lines all over the place. You might even uh, experiment with things like y minus e to the x, uh, y plus log x. If you really want an adventure, why don't you try this? y minus sine x. Now there's an adventure because you're going to have a kind of an asymptote that's doing this all the way to infinity. Now that's interesting. Go exploring and do enjoy. In my next video I'm going to talk about what happens when we double asymptotes. Here I'm going to put my pen away. What happens if we do this? So we've got that asymptote twice. A bit like having uh, double zeros when we deal with polynomials. What does this do? Or if we have a cube or a fourth power? We're going to discuss that in the next video. I look forward to seeing you. Now, if you've enjoyed this, please like the video. I would love to read your comments if you're happy to leave one. And by all means, if, if you're new to this and you've enjoyed what you've seen, then subscribe so you can find out about future videos. And I thank you for watching.